Hey folks, JD here. The DIY drone. So as you saw yesterday, my wife built this from uh, all the sprues and sprigs that she had full of wood inside this particular box. Now today we're hopefully going to fly it. This is going to be my fourth attempt at flying this and what stopped me in the past is the battery was low, I didn't charge this battery properly. Um, even when the battery says it was fully charged I plugged it back in and it still carried on for another hour. So it kind of caught me off guard that did. So let's turn on the quad, let's turn on the transmitter, open and close throttle to bind, there we go we're fully bound. Single yeah, green lights on the quadcopter, single red LED on the transmitter. Now, from what I could see, there is no gyro to cal- Oh, there is. Perfect. Oh, God, it starts automatically. Uh, so, I was going to say, we'll click the automatic takeoff button here, but there was no need because there it goes. So, we have a gyro built in, and which is quite nice, actually, because I was reading the manual, which is pretty useless, and it didn't say anything about there being gyro stabilization, which I then thought, oh, well, there's no gyro and that's the end of that. Right, so what have we got? Well, we've got a very, very light quad is what we have. And with everything, oh, everything known, it actually is doing okay. We get three speed modes as well. You change the speed modes with the uh, left uh, shoulder button right up here. And it's one click for, for first mode second click for speed mode two, third click for speed mode three. Did you see her drop then? That was a pressure differential. So as soon as she was going across, she hit a pocket and she just dropped immediately. She's climbing altitude a little bit. So I'm gonna bring her down because even though it says this has a hundred meters range, it is only made of wood and we don't have any wind here today whatsoever. Not even registering one miles an hour. In fact, it was 0.4, which is quite funny actually. This is most definitely the calm before the storm because we are meant to be having 60 to 70 mile an hour winds as Storm Hannah ravishes the UK, but still we'll see what happens with that. So what we're going to do, I'm going to just put it here, the right analog, uh, the right shoulder button gives us 3D flips. So if we click, oh wow they were slow. <laughs> that was forward, let's try back. Oh I've never quite seen, oh go on get up there, get up there, get up there, good. I've never quite seen 3D flips as slow as that and then give a throttle, give a throttle, take it back up, back up. There we go, and then the last one is over to the left. And then throttle up, throttle up, throttle up. Oh, I've lost it. Oh no, I haven't, I got it. Oh, that was a bit berserk. Okay, doesn't like left 360 flips. Uh, got a little bit crazy there. Okay, so we are not going to be doing those again. So that's not great. I think the fun bit with this particular quadcopter, in all seriousness, and it's certainly what Hannah said, and that is that it, it, it is the building of it. I mean, it doesn't require glue. It is a snap together, um, snap together sort of uh, affair project. And once it snaps together, it actually flies pretty well. Now, speed mode three, angle of attack dips. Over she comes. Ooh, 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 ooh. Speed mode three. Ooh, find it very difficult to actually control. Is that the battery? Is that the battery? She's chewing up. She's. She's cutting grass. Let me see if I can get those motors to stop there. Right, so she's so light. Ooh, stinging nettles. She's so light, she didn't even decrease when uh, she was sitting on top of the grass there. So we have got LEDs are flashing. I'm gonna try and see if I can take her back up for another flight. Hannah did have something to say about the whole build and I will, I'll come onto that. Yeah, those LEDs are flashing. So I'm not gonna take her too far. I'm just gonna pretty much Hover her there. There is headless mode with this as well, uh, which is just activated on the right side button here. And obviously you've got your auto takeoff and landing, which is activated on the left here. Now, when she was coming to build this, I said to her, right, write down your pros and your cons, and then let me know what they are. And she did exactly that. And even though this is constructed quite well, it is laser etched. So therefore you do have nice rounded corners. You have a nice sort of little burr, uh, burn to the outside as well of the wood, which actually adds quite a bit of effect. Actually looks okay. Um, and she said when you're snapping it together, she would have liked the wood to have been a couple of millimeter thicker because even though this is a non-glue project, you are reliant on the fact that you have to snap the parts together. And when I had to take this apart and put some stuff back together, just to see what it was like for myself, I, uh, I figured out that yeah, she was, she was right, exactly. Because if the parts were a little bit thicker, 
then there won't be any snaps. Now there was a snap and I had to, my father-in-law, because we were over in Devon at the time, he fixed it with some Araldite, good old Araldite. And that is that the, uh, the one of the back propeller arms snapped uh, and we had to glue it back together. But obviously, as you know, Araldite will fix absolutely anything and it's not bothered at all by its, uh, by that whatsoever. So that was one of the issues was the thickness of the wood should have been thicker. Uh, second issue was that the, ma the manual wasn't very instructional. So even though it said connect the A propellers to the A motor, it didn't tell you where the A motor should be placed on the frame. So therefore, when we first put it together, as I'm sure you can imagine, we went to take off and it just spun uh, because there was, you know, it just sat there and spinning because it was creating, it wasn't creating the right sort of downdraft in order to take her up. So therefore, that was another issue then. Uh, you know, at the same time, these are easily fixed, very easily fixed, but they are annoyances more than anything. Um, now, when it comes to the transmitter, the transmitter was good. Uh, that went together without any issue, well, with some issues. These little bits here, right? These little bits, these support embraces. Now, they are what holds the back to the front. And what happens here is they're not all, they're not all manufactured in the same, the same thickness, even though it's the same thickness left and right across the, uh, the both struts of the transmitter. So this bit here snapped as soon as we put it on and all the other bits went together, but there are a couple of bits that actually didn't fit like this bit here. So this particular part right there, as you can see, is a bit short. And there we are, I think that's the battery this time. And it didn't fit properly. So if we just have a little look at this quad now, you can see here, I don't know how well, mind you, because it is quite difficult for me to see, but here there's a split, and there's a split the other side there on the A, on back A. Uh, well, that split there was what we had to fix with Araldite, because uh, it, it just it just sheared off when you, when you went to put it together. No, nope, there we are, that's the battery. So flight time, well, that, that, was, that was acceptable. It was standard, standard quadcopter flight time. Um, so the main concerns with this were the thickness and snapping it together, because even though it is snapped together, there we go, I just gotta put it together after that flight because it has wobbled its way free a little bit. Yeah, they all have. All the propeller guards have wobbled their way free. Okay, you can fly without the propeller guards should you want to, but as this was wood and as they do look quite stylish, quite industrial from a uh, from a natural perspective, I did want to get them on there. Um, now, once built, it does look stylish. I'm sorry, if you say it doesn't, then I'm sorry, I totally disagree with you because I think that does look lovely and having the wood as well, that really does bring it out. And it does, look at it, it just looks fantastic. The multi-layers, the way that the, the cables filter through the body, it looks very, very nice. Now, as for um, as for fitting, the, the, fitting the, the plastic cone to the top, you have a choice of two, blue and black. Now, Hannah in, in the video showed you the blue one because she knows I like the color blue and she went to fit it on, but then she couldn't find any place to plug these little sockets. That's quite simply because the black one is the only top which has the printed circuit board on the underneath. The blue one does not. So therefore, there's no, there's no, there's no uh, sockets for you, to, for you to plug your plugs. There's nothing whatsoever. So uh, we had to go with the black one because we couldn't find a way to actually take the printed circuit board off the blue cover and put it on there. Again, just small annoyances. It's not that much of a big deal flying with blue and black. It actually looks quite nice, but still I would have liked it if it was all blue, one color, it stops the goblin in my head from screaming too much. So that's the quadcopter. And then as for the transmitter, the transmitter looks very stylish. It feels stylish. This is what I love. When you're altering the position of the analog sticks, you can see everything inside. The resolution of the analog sticks is not too bad. It does feel quite heavy in places. See, the snapback is quite heavy, but when you're actually flying it, it flies quite well. It flies with ease with this. I don't find that too, too much of an issue. I like the, the etched symbols on here for three speed modes, 360 flips, headless mode, auto takeoff, auto landing. I like that. It looks quite stylish. I like the way that these batteries just plug into the back. It's just thought out a little bit, you know, and I, I quite adore that. I think that's very nice. And also seeing the inside. You can alter the antenna as well, should you want to point it up. But still, I only went as far as the tree line. I didn't have any issues whatsoever with, with signal. So there's, there's the whole thing. I mean, it cost me £23 from, from Gearbest. But at the same time, all I can find now is one that looks similar to this for 65 I can assure you, I did not pay that for it. Uh, but at the same time, I think it's quite fun. But it is more of a kid's DIY project. Finding out how these are built, why you put the certain parts where you do, I think that's exactly what it's entailed for. It's more of a school project than it is for anything else. But I tell you what, that's going to sit on my wall as the only wooden quadcopter that I own. There we are, my friends. I hope you
hope you've enjoyed. Thank you ever so much for watching and listening. I've been JD, you've been fantastic as always. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Hello and welcome to all the new subscribers. I hope you're enjoying the channel. So until next time, my friends, happy flying. <laughs>